okay so good afternoon so we will we will continue with our you know hmm that portion gone surprising i did uh, last time <coughs> the concept of shape function huh? too much confusion hmm. ok so this is what we had done we have taken because we generalize the problem of axial rod and we said let us say that it is subjected to some distributed load p x and uh, then we try to express the displacement within this uh, this element at any point p at a distance x from the left hand as u x u x we have related to the nodal displacement 1 and 2 uh, i think there silence please so so 1 and 2 and uh, and then i told you the what is the concept of shape function we have got this values now so any any function now we have got an idea that any displacement field a displacement field within the element means u u is a variable u x is a variable u x varies with respect to x so u can be expressed in terms of the two nodal values which we have just we have taken it is not necessary that we take only two nodal values there can be more than two and uh, in that case we have taken this and then we said all right we have uh, we can express this and finally, we said that yes, in general we can express a displacement u as n i u i summation over number of nodes and uh, definition of n i is very simple and that also I explained to you last time that definition of no n i is like this. It must have unit value at the node for which we are defining node 1 node 1 value of n i n 1 must be unity at 1 and 0 at all other nodes. Now, since it is only 2 noded, so there is only 2 second node otherwise if there are number of nodes, so it must have 0. So, therefore, the shape of n 1 should be in general it should be something like this unity 0 0 0. So, this is all is this. Similarly, n 2 should have unity at 2 and 0, 0 at uh, uh, there is some amusement going on uh, in the back. Uh, so, then this one is n 2 and similarly, so this is very easy to define. And now we have got that n, I will define n, I will define a shape function matrix. 
as a row matrix. So, I am trying to systematize. So, I will define a n matrix, n matrix which I will call a shape function matrix and it is a row matrix containing n 1 and n 2 as elements of the row. So, this is n 1 and n 2. row. So, it is a 1 by 2 in this case. <coughs> hmm? okay. So, we have expressed displacement and one job is over. Next is definition of definition of uh, after you have defined defined uh, displacement. What is the next step? What should you define next? Huh? No, sequentially. See displacement. Displacement now within the element is defined. U x is expressed as n 1 u 1 plus n 2 u 2, n 1 and n 2s are known functions of x, u 1 u 2 are the nodal values. So, I am discretizing, this process is called discretization. See, this is, this is, this you must note. See, when we say that it is a discrete method, what is the meaning of discrete method? Discrete method means we are dealing with discrete variables u 1 and u 2 are the values of displacements at node 1 and 2. So, they are point values, they are not continuous, it is not a function of x, while this one is a function of x. So, this process also is called discretization. I am discretizing a continuous function. So, mathematician or in mathematical terms I can say that I am discretizing a continuous function into discrete function. So, that is why we say all numerical methods are discrete. Now, we look at points not as continuous. Okay. So, any continuous function has to be discretized and this is the step which discretizes the continuous function into discrete point or nodal values. Okay. After definition of this, next step should be strains. Why? I mean, after any continuous body, any elastic body, next step is always strains, you know why it should not be anything else. After you have fixed your displacements, so strains. How do you define strains? For example, this one, this is a rod. Hmm? at point P how do you define a strain at this point P a strain of course this is under only tension so there is only one component and which is epsilon x a strain in x direction elongation is strain and that is given by derivative of u by d x. Normally, it is a partial derivative here because it is one dimensional only one. So, this is d u by d x. So, u is so d of d x of what u and u is u is n 1 x, n 2 x, like this. <coughs> hmm? 
should this be equality sign here? Is your u exact? No. So, u is approximate. I think I must have given you that we are approximating the approximation value of u is u hat and that is approximated to u and there is always an error. There is always a error between approximate minus exact. Exact we do not know, but this is the error. So, this is u hat, we are dealing with u hat. So, everywhere all these you must remember there is no exact sign, all the processes are this can also be written as because this is the only function of x, this is not a function of x. So, I can write it derivative of So, this matrix is derivative of shape function matrix n we had defined n n matrix we had defined as a row matrix which is consistent of n 1 and n 2 hmm? n, but then this one is what derivative of this. So, this one we denote as in general it can be some b 1 x and b 2 x. I, I will explain. Let us call the derivatives as R. This matrix I can call as a B matrix. Just like now we are systematizing, you know we are calling shape function matrix as N. So, this is a B matrix. What is a B matrix? Derivative of N shape function B this will also be a function of x in general times this is d. So, a strain and this one is a strain. So, in general I can say here it is there is only one component, but in general a strain can be expressed. So, I am just saying a strain can be expressed as b let me not write down this b x it is implied that yes, it will be depending upon what will be the function of in this one, this will be function of x are constant. Huh? So, but it, it could be, so b times d. So, this is a very important, so we have got two, one is u hat is u first, second one is u is n times d. This we have established earlier and now we have established this is strain equal to b times d. b is called a strain matrix, b is strain matrix. Hmm. Hmm. Okay. So, a strain is done. Next, after that means you have defined a strain now, a strain is again a strain is also discretized. What is important is please understand the step a strain at any point within the element a strain at point P is also being expressed in terms of nodal displacement. So, this is also discretized. So, everything is being discretized. 
Next is, so we have defined a strain. Next one, we, we should have our constitutive relation, constitutive material. In this case, it is very, so this is your rod and this is point P. So, at point P, you have now U, you have a strain x and you also have what is the stress at point P what is the stress? There is only one component of stress. This is a simple problem. There is only one tensile stress or compressive stress uniaxial in x direction. So, there is only. So, what is the relationship between strain and stress? Now, here it is simple. Strain is given by this. If it is a linear material, if you test in, most of you must have done universal testing machine. So, this is our E, this constant. So, we are not going beyond yield point, there is a upper yield point, then this, then ductility, then strain hardening and then it is, it breaks. This is the steel this is a stress strain diagram of the steel. So, this is how, so uniaxial test you know Hooke's law gives you this and therefore, I can express So, there is always you can it is always possible to relate stresses with strains uh, at a point uh, within the body by this material law. So, in general we will say yes that we have expressed stress in general. Now, here it is only one component, but now I am saying I am, I am generalizing. This can be expressed here there is no approximation. We are not approximating this is the this is a law you know uh, material law. So, this is E I will call it elasticity matrix E is my elasticity matrix times strain. So, this is the third relation which is important. We can always relate whether it is one dimensional problem or two dimensional or hmm, Then what should you do? Then what? I am just trying to see. In many books, this E matrix is in most books it is it is denoted by D, a matrix D. In some book it is also denoted by 
a matrix C, but I take it as E. All right. So, stress is now related. Now, I told you that yes, uh, we we derived you know this rod was not a difficult problem. We had derived the its um, stiffness matrix by direct method. Uh, then I told you that if you have some generality, uh, if you have a general problem where some complexity is there. For for example, here the you now distributed load within the so how to how to transform that into nodal load. My problem was how to transform the distributed load into nodal load. One is by brute force method. Okay, half the load will go on this node, half the load. Let us put it. So that is a brute force method. But then from first principle we want to do it, you know. So that is what I am trying to explain to you. If you have that kind of thing, then how to do it? Now we have we have what is called a when does a body remain in equilibrium? I think I have explained one day potential potential energy, I think something minimum. Huh? potential energy has to be minimum. Huh? So, then this this diagram I think I must have shown you hmm? Hmm? potential energy. So, this one this represents a stable equilibrium and equilibrium is one is potential energy has to be minimum. Of course, there are situations where potential energy is you know there is no minimum here, here also there is no minimum you know it is standing. So, that is how you have unstable equilibrium here neutral. So, we are talking of this situation. So, potential energy is let us call it by P e potential energy and let us have also a Greek letter pi capital pi is potential energy denote potential energy by pi. Now, pi see this is not a when I was explaining this, this is I had taken a rigid body here. Now, our body here is deformable body it can expand contract. So, there will be when the loads are applied it deforms. So, what happens to the body is strain energy is is stored in the body. So, we call it strain energy. So, this u is strain energy. So, potential energy is given by strain energy and also in that process the external work which are there on the body which are deforming the body they are doing some work. See initially body was at rest no, no loads were there no stresses now you applied load. So, it will deform. So, this one is internal energy. This is because of the stresses will do work over the strains inside the body. Stress, stresses are developed, corresponding strains are there, they will do strain energy, and this is the work done by the load, external load. So, this is external work done. So, potential energy is always expressed as the difference of strain energy minus minus the work done after load external load. Now, once it is this is all right. So, pi now I will take it pi pi is put in u minus w symbolically, but then I have to do it minimum minimum for pi to be minimum to be a a a minimum minimum what should be happen del pi a change in potential energy must be set equal to 0 a small change you take a variation of potential energy first first is what i think when a func function is minimum 
uh, first derivative should be 0 and second derivative for minimum. Yes, yes. So, second derivative. So, for finding out whether it is minimum or maximum, but first for first is it must be first derivative. So, so here I will give you this this can also be expressed is this is this is nothing but a change change can also be expressed as del pi by let us say there were two displacements. So, it will be u 1 times where u 1 u 2 are the two discrete displacements. and this is equal to 0. Now, since these are this cannot be 0, why this cannot be 0? These are changes that are being given to the body, a small change in displacement, a small change in the displacement, they cannot be 0. Therefore, in order that the total expression is 0, you must have these two. Hmm? So, you get two equations. <coughs> so, we will use the same same principle in order to. So, this is indirectly that means, we are indirectly indirectly we shall be satisfying equilibrium by the above minimization process. And this is this principle is called principle of minimum potential energy, principle of minimum potential energy. <coughs> so, all right, for this problem which we have taken in hand, let us do it because let us not. So, how to find out now this? del pi equal to del u minus del w and that is equal to 0. How to find out? So, first we have to find out u and then change in u. First let us find out u. Similarly, first find out work done and then change in. Huh? So, u how will you find out u? So, u is can also I can also take hmm. see body is already stretched load is applied, it is in a state of equilibrium. Now, we want to prove that it is in a state of equilibrium. What we do? We give a small change, we just disturb it, we give a small displacement to the body, keeping the boundary conditions intact, <coughs> keeping the constant, you know, do not lift the body. So, you try to give a displacement. So, in the process, it will do some internal work as well as external work. Now, so when the body is already loaded, there is already stress in the body, there is already strain in the body. Hmm? So, let us assume that the stresses are not varying, are not changing in that small change that we are giving. Stress is, huh? so if the stress is, so whatever stress was there, sigma x was already created inside the body at this rod 
and there was also epsilon x corresponding that also was there you know under the load. Now, I am giving a small change. So, keeping stress constant strain is being changed. So, I will multiply that by a change in del. So, this is the small internal work done per unit volume. Multiply this by volume, integrate over volume and then this is the total change in strain energy. This is change directly I have written the change. I can also I could have written also the total total strain energy, but now I thought they let me uh, because this is a more general principle. So, keeping the stress constant I am giving a change. See when the body is loaded there is already some unique value of stress and strain in the body. Then we give a small push a small this delta in the process strain is getting changed. So, we are assuming that this is remaining constant it is not because both cannot change then then there, there will be problem. Huh? You have to keep one. So, this like this stress strain diagram. So, if it is like this you if you are if the body is already loaded and there is a stress here. So, the corresponding strain was there. So, keeping this we are changing this. So, this one is a small strain a change in strain. So, by doing that what we are getting we are getting this rectangle of course, there is a small triangle here also at the top, but this is the work done. So, this is the work done per unit volume multiplied by volume and then integrate. So, this is the total change in strain energy okay, minus the work done work done by load load is what P x P x was there huh? what was the load P x P x was the load acting at point P and U x was the displacement it was already body had already displaced and it was in a state of equilibrium. Now, you give a small. So, you have given a small delta u u x huh? okay. this multiplied by volume again. So, this is the expression for change in sorry now this is the this is the expression for change in potential energy directly so please substitute and see what what kind of relation you are getting this is continuum <coughs> hmm. yes please anybody will help me what is the stress huh? e times e strain hmm? and change in strain what is what is what is strain given by you know we have we have developed some some discrete relations uh, so, this is ok. So, let, let it be strain d v volume minus <coughs> delta u. Uh, u u is given by what? n times n times d u is given by n times d. So, change in change in this hmm. 
See, do not this is this is simple simple algebra you everything cannot be given you try to also understand what is what is ex ex b times d was given discrete then what about this change change will be doing what how to how to write down change will there be any change in b or d what will be the change d so again b times delta d volume what is volume for a axial rod a times dx hmm? Okay. Yes, this is all right. Hundred percent. There is no. There is nothing wrong. Minus p x. Uh, what is this? N. Again, this will be equal to n times delta d and dv dv again is a times dx now this is see we are writing now we have discretized and we would like to write down in terms of matrix so here they were continuum this is our continuum expression now here i have written in matrix form you know all these things have been written in matrix form. So, matrix has got so certain way that they can be multiplied, not that you can write any matrix in any manner, you know B multiplied by B has no meaning, B multiplied by B has no meaning, you know. Huh? So, how, how to do it, which will, it is Hmm? How to do it? So, that you should know that right in the beginning, right in the beginning, instead of writing, see this is because you have to visualize that finally, we should get a pi is a number, pi is a number 1. So, right in the beginning, I will start instead of writing like this is all right, there is nothing wrong in it, but only thing is, only thing is this multiplication will not be all right, everything is okay. But then, in order to get the proper multiplication, you, you must write down your strain energy like this integral. See, strain is there na the change you say this transpose times sigma times dv if you do it like this then it will be all right because normally what you will you will write see how do you multiply stress and strain component you should get one by one finally so i am writing i am defining strains even if strain is a vector having number of components i am writing it as a horizontal 1 2 3 as a row matrix this one is being written as a vertical is a as a column matrix because normal will be column then this will be row similarly here here this we should have done this delta u transpose I am using transpose small t times p dv general. So, p not only can have only one component, here it is having only one component along. Supposing p is having number of component p1, p2, p3, px, py, pz, it was a three dimensional problem. And then u also were u1, u2, u3, then, then it is better to write like this a row and then this. Now, if you write like this, then everything will be in order. So, what I am saying this is there is nothing wrong in it, 
but then it messes up when you come to the matrix final expression. So, the correct way correct way is this this is the correct and it comes by practice initially you will make mistake. So, so if you take this strain now strain is change in strain change in strain is given by what huh? come on quickly now please please do it quickly change in strain del huh? strain is see you you have all the relation now written in by the side of you u is approximately equal to n times d u is n times d strain is b times d stress is e times strain i think this is this is enough these three these three should be kept now so change in strain i will write it bd huh? So, it will be what integral hmm? do not yawn you know because this is this is simple simple algebra this is simple algebra this is b times change in displacement. So, b times sorry delta d transpose this. I mean otherwise otherwise you will do the mistake where was the transpose yes transpose. So, this is what is so it should be transpose times times is stress huh? e times e times is strain e times is strain and strain is again b times d no change here huh? there is no change this is the stress so b times d here times dv minus yes uh, is there a uh? a into dx okay a into dx is all right for this rod yes a into dx this is equal to a into dx uh? then here delta u delta u so it will be what n n change in d and then transpose times p p we cannot do anything p is a given so p again a into a d x and l l correct Okay, so now it is simple algebra. A B transpose equal to B transpose A transpose. So this can be delta D transpose. It can come out of the integral because this is nodal values. It need not be. This is not a variable, so it can come out. So I will just keep only required thing. Now B transpose A trans. This is transpose. So B transpose. Then E, then again B, then D, D is again can go out outside the integral, uh, then A also can go and only we will leave it A. So, here it is A D x. Hmm? D I have forgot, huh? D D D we have forgotten D. Okay. Where is D inside? No, this one B B D X is inside, but then what about this D? This D. This D will be outside the integral. One D is there. Then, then this one should not be. Yes. Why, why should this be there? Yes, this is not. You cannot have two minus minus. Uh, here, what can come out? 
again again delta d delta d transpose can come out then n transpose can remain inside times p times dx this can be within the integral and what is left is a outside so this is equal to pi this is this is equal to not pi del pi by the way this this principle that we are saying we are checking variation of pi uh, and setting that equal to 0 uh. so this is quickly we have taken too much time so now set this equal to 0 this is so then you are left with area is here has come out times d minus sorry one no this is this is I, I, will, I will like to write this also inside this is common this is common I have taken so this is integral minus n transpose p dx mm. Mm. I think still I have made some mistake this the, this this should not be here this this minus this uh, a is common mm. Mm. Then, yes, then this br big bracket is here and that is equal to 0. Now, you say since this is finite delta d is finite and it cannot be be 0. Therefore, this bracketed quantity should be 0. Therefore, this quantity should be 0 and therefore, you get therefore, you get integral B transpose E B dx into d minus integral n transpose p dx equal to 0. If I denote all this including you know let, let a be there, there was a here na? A can be kept. Of course, A we have taken common, so okay. Chaliye. Then this this quantity is a very important quantity. This is you know all the quantity that we have defined here, all these matrices. So this quantity, let us call this as K. K times D. And this quantity n transpose p dx is will help us to transform the continuous load p x into nodal load. 
because if it is k d, so this one will give us. So, let us call that as some vector p and that is equal to 0 and therefore, you get yes you get k d equal to p. The only thing is k. Now, k please you define your k. What is k here? Huh? Yes. So, and d is u 1 u 2. So, k 1 1. So, for example, k k consists of because this is d is u 1 u 1 u 2 you know. So, k 1 1 for example, if you if you like to define. So, how will you define? So, I just want to complete this. So, please let us let us define this uh, k. k is here, k is defined by this. So, what is your B matrix? Hmm? Kindly keep keep A A intact just for sake of completeness. No, do not leave A. Let it be A A be there at both places. Although, you know, do not cancel it. So, what is this one? Can you write down B? B matrix. What is B matrix? We had defined B matrix. Huh, B matrix, strain matrix, derivative of displacement shape function and transpose of that. So, that is equal to integral. Now, integral is there over L. Let A be there and then B matrix transpose. So, it will be what? D n 1 by D x d n 2 by is it not b transpose b was defined as a row matrix therefore transpose will be a column matrix times e modulus of velocity now i am not writing as this one as a e huh? times e modulus of velocity of the material times b Yes. Dx. So, what is it? Quickly, quickly, quickly you do it. 0 to L A. Huh, what is D and what was N 1 by the way? 1 minus x by L. So, what is D N 1 by D x? minus 1 by L. Huh. So, look here minus 1 by L plus 1 by L. What, a, what was N 2? Therefore, D N 2 by D x is 1 by L hmm. times E. minus 1 by L 1 by L dx. Can you please multiply? Everything is constant, so there is no problem. This can be multiplied. This is 2 by 1. This is 1 by 1. This is 1 by 2. Now, everything is in order. Everything is in order. Otherwise, you would not have multiplied, you know, the matrices. <coughs> So, can you multiply this please? It will be 1 by this into this, this into this. First row, I am sorry, first see, first this, then this, yes. See, everything is constant except dx. So, it will be L, it will give you one extra L when you integrate. 
So, 1 by L square will become L. 1 by L square after integral it is becoming 1 by you know multiplication it is becoming 1 by L square multiplied by L because 0 to L. So, you get here this into this plus minus minus plus 1 by L square multiplied by L multiplied by E multiplied by A A by L then this into this minus minus your mind is somewhere else and your friend's mind also. Huh? You are not interested both of you somewhere else I mean you are you looking here or thinking about the uh, tech fest. Is it okay 1 by L this this into this first row second column of the second matrix. So, minus minus A by L this into this this quantity into this quantity that will give you minus A by L this into this again it will give you A by L. So, this k has come out to be the same as what we had got earlier, no change, hmm? there is no change. Hmm? Okay. Not bad, at least we did not make any mistake. Okay, so next, what about P? Now P, which you are calling, P is given by A, then N transpose, huh? P, something like this, na? So what is? what is n transpose oh, by the way n transpose n transpose is 1 minus x by l here x by l here times p p is a single value just p p x times d x No, I, I should not call it P x here, actually it is a P uh, that P is per unit volume. This P here right from beginning we have we started with volume. So, it is per unit the unit is per unit volume do not do not get uh, this dimension is per unit volume. While the P x which we have shown in our diagram P x is line here like this huh? p x at point it is working on p x because it is one dimensional problem. So, it is per unit length hmm? is it ok or not per unit length. Uh, so, if I want to Yes, if I if this is per unit volume and if I want to that means if this and this is multiplied together, I am just saying you get see dimensions must be correct. So far dimension is correct. Then it will become per unit length. Yes, if this is this and this is taken together A times P if it is per unit volume multiplied by area. So, because area is coming in numerator, so it becomes per unit volume, volume is Nietzsche, centimeter cube. So, it will, it will become only centimeter, so it will become per unit area. So, if you want per unit, per unit length, if you want per unit length, 
which is this, this is per unit length. Then this A need not be there, A will be subsumed in this P, then it will give you per unit length. So, clearly now you have this your expression for is p. Now, p always creates problem in the beginning, you do not understand. Now, let, let p x be p naught, p naught means what? Constant, constant per unit volume u d l. So, along the length it is like this, same. So, this is p naught constant. If it is constant, hmm, so P will be hmm, are integrate. If you integrate, you will get x minus x square by 2 L, x square by 2 L here, 0 to L into P naught. Is it clear? If you integrate this, this each term of the matrix, each term of the vector has to be integrated. So, this will become x, x square by 2 integral, x square by 2 L from 0 to you have to integrate huh? 0 to L. So, therefore, what is the value? Can somebody find out? See, when it is 0, it is 0, when it L minus, for example, here L by 2. So, you get here P naught. L by 2 again P naught L by what is the meaning of this? If I have a rod two noted and this is U D L and this is being discretized discretize means I do not want any distribution on the rod. I want to put the effect of the distribution P naught. I want to put the distribution P naught then it, it is equivalent to a load here P naught L by 2. So, this is continuous distribution is being dis being being uh, transformed into nodal force. So, the P is giving you the nodal equivalent nodal force and that is why P is called nodal force vector. This is the nodal force vector. So, it gives you this. So, now for various distributions you can find out this you know supposing the load was not constant, but load was on the on the two noded. You have a distribution which is P 1 here and 0 here. This is the distribution of load that means here it is a bigger and as you go closer to the other end, it is becoming small, small, small and finally, 0. Wiring P 1 is here, maximum is P 1 and 0 here and it varies linearly. It varies linearly. So, what is the equation of this curve? 1 minus x by L into P 1.
So, you take this and find out what is the equivalent. So, I want to transform this into when there is no load on the element. So, transform this and put the equivalent loads over here by that integral n transpose p d x that will that will transform that will transform. So, you take any value over here what is the value over here you take any value of uh, multiply that by your uh, n transpose and then integrate from 0 to l. By the way, how uh, can anybody say what it will be? Huh? It will be yes, see what is the area of the triangle P 1 into L by 2. Area of the triangle is P 1 into L by 2, P 1 into L by 2. This is the total load, total load on this rod, total load is this much. Now, you make two thirds and one third. 2 third is will be, so 2 third means see on this side which is heavier. So, this one will become P 1 L by 3, 2 third and then 1 third if you make it will become how much? 6 P 1 L by. So, I am making, I am giving you after the result afterwards, but if you integrate you will get the same thing. When you integrate the addition of this is how much total? Three. This one, na? So, so then it is okay. Huh? So you will get equivalent nodal. So p vector will be for this. So. Now, you have the facility of defining any kind of load and then finding out the equivalent nodal forces and this is this method which we have just now followed is indirect method of deriving the same force displacement relation same k d equal to f is a force displacement relation of the element because what is most important is of the element. Uh, why did we follow this? Because we did not know the method, we, uh, we did not know it could not have been derived by the direct method because there was a distributed load. So, that method works only when problem is simple all the loads are applied at the nodes. So, it will work for trusses, uh, it will work for trusses, it will work for frames where all the loads are applied at nodes, uh, but the moment you have loads in between the nodes then that method will direct method will fail. Hmm? Plus, it will also fail when the geometry of the element is complicated. Uh, simple geometry it will work, but slightly no. So, therefore, this indirect method which uh, satisfies equilibrium by an indirect approach and which tells you okay, potential energy has to be minimized. So, any small change in potential energy must be set equal to 0. This is called variational principle because we are taking a variation of pi. So, this is one of the variational principle. This is a variation of potential energy. Minimum potential energy principle is also called a variational principle. Variational principle. So, there are books on variational principle. This is a subset of variational principle. And, uh, it helps you to derive the same conditions of equilibrium, which you would have normally derived by writing down the equilibrium of forces <coughs> in x, x direction, y direction, z direction. In I think if you remember your first course of uh, engineering mechanics right, first part of that engineering mechanics we do rigid body mechanics by writing down the drawing the free body diagram and then free body diagram of the problem and then writing down the equilibrium condition. And then the last chapter was their energy method, energy method. So, same 
equilibrium conditions could be arrived also there by writing down the energy. Uh, there was a virtual work also. So, here also this is also a virtual work principle. See, this is called virtual work principle. See, delta just a minute, delta pi, wait a minute now, this is 0. So, this is minimum potential energy principle. minimum potential energy principle okay ha huh? delta sorry sorry delta u huh? delta u delta u and that u also is not normal u it is a capital u you know bold face u hmm? strain energy when we write strain energy pi also is a big pi you know it is not this is small pi like this no it is a there are two pi you know two this huh? But all the quantities are scalar, they are all scalar quantities, not vector. And this principle, if you write like this, from here you get this equal to this. So, this is called virtual work principle. This is virtual work principle. virtual work. So, they are related mm. virtual work principle. Mm. So, we can derive the same thing by this and you please learn uh, how to derive I mean how to make use of this principle for now. Huh. I am giving you as a your home assignment, you you, uh, but you do not have to submit for the 3 springs derive the what force displacement relation of the 3 spring problem using energy method. You just simply take energy method and do it by energy method, how will you do it? Huh? Okay. So, we have done the same problem, the same rod problem by energy method and I am giving you uh, to do the same problem, by, I mean same spring problem by energy method now. Through deep the way. 